Hello, I'm Natasha Foreman. Welcome to the Breaking Bread with Natasha podcast, where I share daily devotionals from my namesake blog. So you can listen on demand to spiritual messages inspired by God's love, as expressed in the Bible and other religious texts. You can read along at breakingbreadwithnatasha.com or sit back and take in the word. Either way, I'm blessed to have you break bread with me. Without further delay, let's begin today's message. Welcome, Breaking Bread family. This is Natasha Foreman. Thank you so much for joining me today. Let's look at the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 5, and we're going to look at lines 1 through 3. And the translation that I'm reading says, Guard your steps when you go to the house of God. Go near to listen rather than to offer the sacrifice of fools who do not know that they do wrong. Do not be quick with your mouth. Do not be hasty in your heart to utter anything before God. God is in heaven and you are on earth. So let your words be few. A dream comes when there are many cares and many words mark the speech of a fool. Hmm. Let's back up for a moment. Two days ago, we discussed our empty vows to God. That was uh, Ecclesiastes um, chapter 5, and it was line 4, right? The verses that I just finished reading, lines 1 to 3, provide the needed context for verse 4, of course, right? The writer or teacher, as he was called, was trying to help people navigate a part of their relationship with God. In verse 1, he cautions against rushing into the house of God, rambling out prayers. He says to instead come inside and listen first. When you sit down to talk with God, do you just start pouring everything out or do you wait and listen first? Hmm. They say fools rush in. The wise know to wait. <laughs> ah, I too am working on this. <laughs> In verse 2, he cautions to speak with fewer words. Jesus also said this when he cautioned that lengthy prayers weren't necessary. He also cautioned against praying for public attention and making vain repetitions, which you know, are empty phrases. That's cited in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, lines 5 through 7. When we get to verse 3 in Ecclesiastes 5, line 3, it sort of throws a slight curveball because it mentions our dreams. Our rambling of prayers is sometimes because we're just imitating what we've heard from others, especially at church, but oftentimes it's because we're overwhelmed by all of our issues and we desperately want resolution by God. Well, it's said that a person flooded by dreams is carrying around a lot of stuff and the dreams can be playing out scenarios, warning us or planting seeds of possibility. When you have a lot of fears, goals, desires, unresolved issues, you dream. The ones you remember may be the ones you need to examine further or surrender quickly to God for resolution. Let us also work towards saying more with fewer words as the longer we speak, the less is retained by others and the more we seem to be on our own soapbox. It can also be said that the more you talk without the goal seeming to be clarity the more it appears you don't know what you're saying you're just trying to wing it hmm. besides when it comes to petitioning and praying to god as jesus made clear god already knows our issues concerns needs and desires before we ask him right you can read matthew chapter 6 line 8 so why do we feel the need to ramble and babble? It's not like he was on vacation and we need to catch him up with all of the details. 
he's more present in our lives than we are. Hm. Wow. <laughs> this analysis has really helped me. I I hope it helps you or someone you know. Let's pray. You ready? You want to join me in prayer? All right. Father, I have dreams, both good and bad, throughout the day and at night when I rest. Comfort me, Lord, when I'm in pain by the visions of bleakness and despair. Help me to see the right paths towards resolution. Father, help me to frame my thoughts before I speak so that I may make best use of the message, delivering fewer words with the greatest of impact. In your name I pray. Amen. And with that, family, I pray that you are blessed, that you see and embrace your blessings, and that you are a blessing to others. I love you. Take care. Hi, family. If what I shared in today's message resonates with you, I hope you will share it with others. Feel free to leave positive comments and reviews on my site, breakingbreadwithnatasha.com, and through whichever podcast provider that you're listening to me. Each day, I work to be a better steward and servant. I hope you will join me in sharing God's love and truth and rebuking the enemy's lies. Now go out there and make today an awesome day. I love you all.